The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma has issued a high risk of severe weather today, March 17th, 2021, and we are going to do an evaluation of the risk with this. But first, we're going to get into the brand new day one convective outlook from the SPC, which has the high risk upgrade, 30% hatch tornado probabilities, 30% wind and hail both hatched. And some of the major cities we have in the significant in the high risk tornado area include Jackson, Mississippi, Greenville, Mississippi, Tupelo, Vicksburg, and Clinton, Mississippi. Now this is all the result of a very strong upper level disturbance we're seeing, a compact short wave with closed low, and associated with this a vortmax at the base. This is going to be ejecting through the southern plains toward the Ozarks, and as it does so, you'll note the tilt is going from a little more positive toward a little more negative and that's because this wave is amplifying with time as it does so we have considerable defluence and divergence at the exit region of the jet streak and that's going to support mainly from this area to about this area the progression of a deepening surface low that's going to be a critical part to this too so we have that feature and at the same time as this occurs we'll be seeing an amplification of low-level flow mainly across this area. So we'll be seeing as the surface low deepens 850 millibar flow from about the south to south-southwest increasing above 40, 45, and 50 knots and then as we head into the evening above 50 knots even across parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Now that's going to result in a very moist environment as we see right here circled. We have surface dew points that are in the mid to upper 60s, even some 70s. So we have a very moist air mass ahead of this system, ahead of a sweeping cold front that's going to be associated with the low pressure system moving through Oklahoma and into southern Missouri. In addition, we're going to have some mid-level lapse rates coming over the area. An EML in mid-levels is going to enhance lapse rate steepness and provide further destabilization. So when we have it all told, the combination of the intrusion of the EML, the significant moisture content in the boundary layer, and the approach of the upper level system, and we could be looking at significant cape, mainly through this area here, reaching values for surface-based parcels of 2,000 to 2,500 joules per kilogram, even locally higher, mainly in the high-risk area that the SPC has outlined. Now, an interesting thing here that we're going to note is uh, we're going to take a look back at this moisture uh, dew point map. This is going to be the location at 00Z of the warm sector. This is where we have instability. This is where we have SB Cape above 1500 joules per kilogram, and in some cases above 2000, 2500 joules per kilogram. And if we take that and we look at this, this is the 500 millibar flow associated with our compact shortwave disturbance. This is overspreading the warm sector. So when you have that mid-level flow overspreading the warm sector, you've got very strong wind shear. So we're talking about effective bulk shear that as we head through the late afternoon and evening hours could increase to 45, 50, and then 60 to perhaps 65 knots or even locally higher through the uh, effective bulk shear calculations. We're also going to be seeing, at the same time, an amplification of low-level flow. That's going to result in increased hoodograph curvature. And as a result of that, we're going to see higher storm relative velocity. Uh, we're going to be mainly looking at the evening right here because we're going through, this is 21Z, and then we go to uh, 00Z right here, and then 03Z. And what you're going to note is that in this time frame, starting out down here, we see an increase in helicity. And this is zero to one kilometer. That those values there are above 200 to 250 meters squared per second squared. Getting into Mississippi and Alabama, so in total we're looking at this area here. We have zero to one kilometer storm relative velocity in excess of 300 to 350 meters squared per second squared. That is negative. Of very strong level shear. Very strong streamwise vorticity and very high potential for rotation in discrete storms. Looking at the sounding, what is this going to look like in the vertical? This is what we're looking at, a setup that is really quite favorable for a tornado outbreak. We see here that through the boundary layer, we have high RH, we've got a deep positive, uh, positive area indicating strong buoyancy. 
we've got uh, composite parameters, of course, down here in this box that are very high. Supercell composite above 18 and fixed layer SDP above 4. And it could be even higher in some locations. Now looking at the vertical wind profile, we know an increase in flow and a change in direction of flow that is further indicated here in the hoodograph by strong curvature and increased length. And if we finally look down here at the effective bulk shear and other shear parameters, we see very high values, 60, 70 knots even. And that's an environment that is warranting this possible hazard of PDS tornado because we could see strong tornadoes with this setup and numerous tornadoes. Looking at the HRRR, this is the 00Z run, it has a more complete view, um, for several hours out. We're going to be seeing multiple rounds of thunderstorms, and this is going to be the multifaceted part of the outbreak. In the morning hours, we've got storms firing going over Arkansas, parts of Tennessee. These storms will be associated with uh, the northern part of the warm sector and the warm front. So we could see severe weather with them, some tornadoes, some large hail, some hail could even be significant. Uh, going forward from there though, this is when we're going to start to see the next round of severe weather occurring in this area here. We've got potential for supercells in this area which could become very organized and potentially produce strong tornadoes, significant tornadoes, in addition to large hail. And then we're going to go further into the evening and this is when we go with the cold front over the high risk area and we know a, just a mess of thunderstorms and sometimes that doesn't work in the favor we've also got storms over here in Arkansas and sometimes that doesn't work in storms favor but in this case this area here is likely to see mixed modes of QLCS Boeing segments with rotation embedded and strong Boeing segments with wind but also we're going to be seeing supercells with it. and I'm going to show you this too just based on this run alone you can see here and here even over here in Georgia yes Georgia could have some severe weather too we are seeing considerable supercellular development supercellular shapes and so through this area we could see long tracked strong to potentially violent tornadoes that are going to be occurring even during the overnight hours as we head through eastern Mississippi and northern and central Alabama, potentially even far southern Tennessee. So this, and we've also got storms further to the south, we're going to keep an eye on these too. So this is a dangerous situation that bears significant monitoring. Anyone in the path of this needs to make sure their weather radios are working, needs to make sure they have a reliable way to receive warnings, that their uh, weather station is accurate, that they're getting their information from, and be careful when checking social media for information, because there is a lot of inaccurate information spread on there. So this might require a further update if things change, but as of right now, this is what we're looking at, a high risk over parts of Louisiana, far southeastern Arkansas, northern and central Mississippi, and into far western Alabama. This has been a severe weather evaluation for March 17th, 2021.